All right, Coach Sosa, how you doing today, man? What's up, guys? I can't complain at all, man. So, just want to get your thoughts on um, Javante's knockout win over um, Roly Romero this past weekend, man. Oh, well, since I told you in the last video that uh, we did, it was going to be an intriguing fight because uh, even though people say Roly has like a weird style, crazy style, but that's his style. And, and he made it work in the fight into he, uh, he got lazy and, you know, he got caught. But if not, it, it would have been an intriguing fight. You know, he, he did get knocked out in the six, but at that point, who did you have winning the fight? i say maybe it could have been even, or maybe Roley up by a little bit, because he was a little busier than Tank. Tank was moving around, throwing a shot here, shot there, but Roley was a busy, busier guy, you know? Did Roley, did, did Roley do, I guess I want to say, did Roley impress you more than how you thought he was going to play out? Because a lot of people thought he was just going to go and then get blown out. Uh, yeah, he did. I mean, I, well, since I told you he was here for a couple of days training and I saw what they were, you know, working on, I knew he was going to go in there and try to blow him out. He just probably was just doing it just to sell a fight. But, um, you know, he, he played it smart for the first five rounds. He got lazy and got caught. Gotcha. Now, who do you kind of want to see next for Roley right now? Roley? Yeah. I think after this, this uh, KO, he should take, like, a easy fight and then come back and get somebody, you know, on the harder side, but now he should get like an easy fight. Gotcha. Now, what about Javante? I know he did mention probably fighting the winner of Devin Haney versus Cambosis, Ryan Garcia. Um, you know, there's also a Lomachenko fight that's also out there. Of, of all of those options, which one do you think would probably be the most difficult fight for Tank? Difficult. I'll say Loma. So, are, are you of the belief that Loma is still the guy at 135? No, he's not the guy, but I'm saying for Tank. I mean, uh, Loma with the little angles and all that, he might make it a little harder than, than everybody else. Who would you kind of pick? Well, not even pick, but who would you lean towards in that fight? Damn, that, that equalizer now that Tank has shown, you can't, it, it, it's like Waldo, you know what I mean? He has an equalizer that one shot puts you out, so, wow, I, you know. But the, is, is a part of you somewhat nervous, only saying that from the standpoint of Tank doesn't throw a lot of punches. I believe no, in the fight against Roley, I believe he landed four punches per round. So, like, doesn't that, like, would that kind of make you have a little bit of cause to pause? Like, hey, you know, maybe you should get a little bit busier or anything like that? Yes, yes and no. Especially when you, when you know you just have that equalizer. One shot changes the whole, the whole fight, and that's what happened. He was patient enough to weigh into a Roley did a mistake. And he made Roley pay. Gotcha. Now, can I get your thoughts on Laura, man? You know, he was in the co-main event. He's 39 years old. He did knock um, Spike O'Sullivan out. How do you think he looked in that fight, man? I think he looked the way he should have been looking. You know what I'm saying? Uh, um, what's his name? Spike? Mm -hmm. Spike was, you know, he's a flat-footed fighter. Slow. Uh, decent power. But he was there to get hit. And Lara basically did whatever he wanted to, to Spike. But, uh, but, but to tell you the truth, uh, Spike was started to catch him with those body shots. And uh, um, this guy's uh, tempo started to drop slowly. And if the fight would have gone a couple of rounds, you never know. You know, I actually got a chance to talk to um, Laura probably about a week ago or something like that. And I asked him because, you know, he's really close with Jamal Charlo, um, stable mate at one point, and just really close. And I asked him, like, hey, um, what do you think about a fight like that? He said, you know, I love Charlo a lot, but business is business, and I would love to get that fight. How would you see a fight between Charlo and Laura playing out? Like I said, and Charlo, Charlo, you know, he has, he has those equalizers too. So, um, I think Charlo will get him. Do you view Charlo as the guy at 160 pounds right now? 60. Who the hell is this 160? Um, we got Triple G. Um, Triple G, um, yeah, I'm not a Triple G fan. Um... <laughs> uh, yeah, probably he's the man at 160. I, I know Janibek did just win the, the interim title. I'm not a fan of Janibek, yeah. No, you, don't, you don't think he's like the next He's all right, but... Not as, not as cracked up as a lot of people make him yeah. Gotcha. Interesting. Okay. So, could you kind of talk about the fight between your fight and Nikita? Um, he's going to be fighting on June 25th, I believe, in San Antonio. Correct. Yeah, that's correct. He's uh, Nikita Bobby, a.k.a. the White Chocolate. He is back. Uh, he'll be fighting June 25th. And uh, it's a little step up fight. He's fighting a guy, fourteen and one, and um, he, he's ready. He'll he'll be ready to shine on those bright lights. 
when it comes to you know preparing your fighter for fights how exactly do you do it are you the guy that you know you have to break down a lot of tape do you like your fighter to watch it with you or are you probably the only one that's in the room watching the tape and you're just like hey this is what he doesn't do well this is what i want you to work on yeah basically me and the assistant will watch a couple of fights and uh, we'll talk about the weaknesses and the strengths of, of the opponent and then uh, we break it down to nikita and we go over uh over training, we go round by round, more or less what he has to do. Gotcha. Is there anything about this guy coming up that you guys have to worry about? Because the fight is in just a few more weeks, yeah, really. Man. Probably 24 days. Yeah. Uh, nah, nah. I mean, I, Nikita, Nikita's different. Once he's on, he's focused and uh, trains, He he's good. He's going to be one of the top ones soon. Not yet, but soon. How far? I know it's always kind of hard to say, but... You know, fans are always just like world title, world title, world title. How far away do you think he is from probably, you know, pushing towards the top ten of the division? Top ten. Well, if Nikita stays focused and and really puts his feet on the floor and trains hard, I'd say maybe a year or less. Gotcha. Now, who do you view as the top guy in his division right now, actually? Fifty-four. Mm -hmm. Well, excluding Charlo, because Charlo is supposed to be moving up. Right. So, excluding Charlo. 54. Damn, who the hell is at 54? Um, you got Fedora, you got Lubin, you got... Yeah, those guys um, on the other team. <laughs> Tim Tazu. Um, so Tim Tazu will be a good fight. Mm. So is, is that kind of the guy that you think is probably the top guy at 154 now that Charlo could be moving up? No, I mean, Tim Tazu is good, but he's still not, not that experienced to be fighting Charlo yet. But, you know, he's going to be a problem, but not now. He's still... A little raw, but um, you know, Charlo will take him. Gotcha. So, when you get every belt, in your view, does it make sense to stay at that weight class and defend it a few more times, or in your opinion, it's just like, hey, I already have all the belts, I'm just gonna move up now? Well, depending on two things: if, if the money's on that division, or if he could make the weight easy. If he's struggling, then you got everything. Might as well move up. Gotcha. Now. Dude, how much? The, how, can you just kind of break down the sanctioning fees? Because I believe it's three percent for each belt, right? Yeah, man. Believe it. Four, <laughs> four belts. I mean, that that gets to be a, a good chunk of money. So, the, does that play like also a role in it? Like, I, I, don't feel I believe game? so. I believe so. Gotcha. Now, I, something I want to touch on since we're talking about undisputed. I got a chance to talk to um, to Tiafimo, and he said that I know that Josh Taylor said that he's he was gonna move up, but he just vacated the WBA belt, so he said he's gonna stay now. Um, if those two were to eventually fight, um, how would you see that fight playing out, man? At forty, right? Mm -hmm. I like Lopez, but Taylor's shown he's the dog. He's he's beating. He has beaten tough guys. Elite guys, I mean Lopez is my man, but uh, that's a 50-50 right there, you know? Now, could you just kind of talk about the return of um, Big Baby Miller? Um, he was suspended for about two years now, and he should be making a return um, pretty soon. So can you kind of talk I about believe, I believe it's going to be June 25th. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it, and it's, uh, it's been a long three years, but uh, finally they gave him the opportunity, and he's back. He should be fighting June 25th. Not sure where yet, but he'll be back. Do you, do you see him really? Is this fight the fight that's going to probably get him back in the mix of the upper echelon of the heavyweight division, or are they going to take a few fights to get him? Yeah, I don't think this fight will. You know, this fight will be just like a little get back fight. But um, I believe after three fights, he should be back on the scene. Now, what makes Big Baby so special, man? He's a gargantuan guy, and he throws <laughs> a million friggin' punches, man. You just said it. You just said it. <laughs> so, so, like, what, like, how, how, like, how, what kind of training do, do you guys do with him, anyways, to get him to be able to do that type of stuff? You just said it. He's 6'5", 300 pounds, or plus pounds. <laughs> but uh, he's definitely, he's one of the guys that puts that pressure. He definitely knows how to work the body, head, body, head, body, and puts that pressure. He, and he knows how to use his body, like lean on you, push on you, put the elbow on you. He knows how to do all that, makes him even more dangerous. But yeah, I mean, once he's here, we, we work him until he can't breathe anymore. But uh, he, he's a good guy, good boxer, and I'm glad he's back. Gotcha. Just my last thing, man. Nobody's involved, but if if um, if Big Baby was to fight Joshua in 2019 when they were originally called to fight, how would you have seen that fight playing out, man? Same way as Ru uh, Ruiz. A knockout? Yeah. Wow. Could you kind of break down why exactly? Well, I think like the first couple of rounds, Big Baby had to be moving around, trying to 
get them tired, you know, lean on them, be a little dirty. And then by maybe the, the fifth, sixth rounds, because you've seen Joshua get tired quick. And when you have a 300-plus three, guy leaning on you, being dirty on you and hitting you a little behind the head, a little behind the back, that gets you. And um, after maybe five, six rounds, he would have been tired and then he would have unloaded. Probably stopped him in the eighth. Gotcha. Thank you, man. Appreciate it.